Hi, I'm Raleigh Williams, and I'm playing in the Pool US Open. Now, I'm not that good, so I'm gonna get absolutely killed. But for the next 10 weeks, I'll be training with some pro players to try to get as good as possible. This is the road to the US Open. And we're back. I am joined, as always, by professional pool player Hunter Lombardo. Hunter, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me here, Raleigh. Of course. Now, today, I would love to work on a drill that's been really giving me problems. It's called the center field drill. I learned this from Mr. Ralph Eckert. Are you familiar with this drill? Absolutely. I love this drill, and I don't know why. A lot of other drills, I feel like I just want to eat a fork by the end of them. But this one, I really enjoy. So, you're telling me it just fits your attention span? Yeah, I guess that is a good way to put it. Okay, good. I know you'll be on all cylinders with me. Oh yeah. So this is the center field drill. So the object of this drill is to start in the box anywhere you want, and then hit one of these four balls in, and then get the cue ball to come back into the box. And then you hit the next ball in, the next ball, the next ball. You can shoot it in any order. But you've got to land in the box every time after the shot. And then once you've got all four balls, you leave the cue ball there, put four new balls up, and then go again. So you can go as high as many times as you can. I can only get to about 10 balls. Are you, are you telling me how to do the drill, or are you telling the viewers how to do the drill? Well, I mean, the viewers aren't here in this room, so I'm sort of just saying it at I'm, you. But I'm I, I believe me. that you know the rules But of we're well drill. aware of that I know this drill, too. I mean, OK, well, let's just say it. Hey, people watching, Hunter actually does know how to do this drill. That was just for the benefit of the content of the video. What's a good strategy for me to beat my high score? Uh, is to have a strategy for the, uh, a change. Okay. And not just have a strategy, but also have the right psychology in order to have the right strategy. With any drills, people tend to get caught up with uh, preference versus like, hey, you know, I'm gonna have to actually shoot it this way even though I'm not comfortable with it, but if I do this now, get it out of the way now, it's gonna put me back in a better line to now have more of shots that I prefer. To develop a strategy that's gonna work best for you is now we have to get into the psychology of it and what's going through your thoughts as you're doing this drill. Okay, let's get to work. Great. Yeah, this is definitely one of the many drills that Ralph Eckerd um, pretty much ran by me uh, through my development uh, when I came back into the game, and it's a love-hate relationship I have for this, but it's also shaped me into the, the player I am now. Great, and so what's your high run? It's like 130-something. Oh. Okay, all right. Well, I don't expect to get there, but I would love to get in the double digits. That's okay. Yeah, me too. Okay, so um, my normal way I start this is, uh, honestly, I will start it like kind of a, a wide, like a long shot on the 14 ball because I've just had success with hitting that kind of shot. Okay. Um, now it's time for uh, my suggestions. Please. Okay. Being right-handed, I think you starting from there, um, you're, you're adding some variables into right from the beginning that we really don't need. Okay. Um, now, if it so happened that through the process of this drill, that cue ball landed there and you needed to like, contort yourself the way you're about to. Sure, I get that, but like right now, how about, how about we come over here and let's, let's put the, you know, you've got ball in hand here in the box. Put it somewhere here, and now you can be in a position like this. Yeah. And to get to the box and start working, now working your angles. But I feel that in the beginning, the one thing that must be established is getting an angle for an angle to the to the next shot. Okay. That's that's the, the premise of this drill is learning how to always play an angle for an angle, um, so that you can become a better positional player. Great. Which is going to now give us the result that you're looking for, and that's to get past ten. Now, am I trying to shoot for a specific part of the box here, or just trying to get into the box? Well, well look, great. So now you're starting to exhibit a better psychology. Okay. Because your, the strategy, again, it's all strategy here. Mm. So where do you think now from, if we're starting here, what's gonna be, what would be the next shot you're gonna play? Um, well, usually that just depends on where I get in the box, but maybe I would like to. Yeah, see, that, that, that's, that's just, that's too vague for me. Okay. I well, mean, it's kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna take what I get. Yeah. You're in control, you're starting in control. So why not stay in control? Maybe I would like to stun up right there so I get the 14 ball in. Okay, good, so that, now this is starting to make sense. Okay. All right, 
So we're gonna we're gonna go there, which is now gonna give us an angle to then probably what I want. Look, one of the things that I'd really like to see here happen here is we've got four balls on the table. So can can we start to like think four balls ahead? Sure. And then by doing that, believe it or not, you, your numbers are gonna raise tremendously, and then you're gonna then stop yourself and say, uh, wait a minute, what what number am I on now, Hunter? And I'm gonna be like uh, three. 20 something. Okay. But that's how, that's how it is, is because you should really get lost in the, the process versus being so fixated on like, oh, what, what's my current count? Gotcha. Okay, so pretty much almost where you were trying to get, right? Yeah. You're maybe trying to get a little bit further. Yeah. All right, great. Let's, let's keep it up. Here's sometimes where I have the issue. There's sort of four different kinds of shots, right? There's like if your cue ball is here mm -hmm. to here, you can just kind of roll forward, hit off one rail and come back. Okay. So if it's, if it's here, I can use a little uh, side spin and come two rails and come back. But I'm sort of in this, a little bit of a middle ground. All right. So let's clean it up. So basically you're telling me uh, the options that have, that come up when we get this certain angle is either one rail or two rails. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, I, I can understand that more than what you're hitting me with. So, uh, in this case, I feel the straighter you get, uh, I mean, one rail is gonna probably be the better option, mm -hmm. uh, unless you are comfortable with applying side spin. But if we're gonna apply a side spin, we're gonna now introduce more variables. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna come down to uh, preference. So how, how are you feeling at this moment? I would actually think I would switch and shoot the 10 ball. Yeah, I think moment. that's a better idea. All right, so yeah. let's do it. Because this is giving you more angle to work with, and now it's, it's, it's very similar to the shot that we had just shot before. Right. So you, you're able to recognize and feel more comfortable with. Great, Raleigh. Thank you. And now, Some, something I'd like to add to this is that the, one of the things about this drill, Buddy Hall always talked about that uh, whenever you're confused about positional play, that just get to the center of the table. Mm -hmm. And that's something that this drill, again, is, is emphasizing is that get, get to the center of the table. Sometimes people try to get a little too cute with uh, their angles, and then they will end up taken a crazy shot that of course now diminishes the, the you know their chances of it going in to try to get a, a superior angle when uh, sometimes it's better to go ahead and take the, the the not superior angle and make the ball so you can still keep your run going yeah okay so getting to the center tail this is why it's one of my favorite drills so. Um, and one last thing I, that I think Ralph Eckert told me that is really good is you take your, your stick and if you draw a line between the balls, if you're on this side of the, of the line and you're shooting at this ball, you go one rail. If you're on this side of the line and you're shooting at this ball, you go two rails. Well, that, that would make sense because you see the tangent's pretty much telling you that. Yeah, cool. So I'm gonna shoot the 11 ball and go one rail. Uh, yes, you can go one rail here, but you're, you're kind of at the like 50 yard line where you could go two rails. With now, the 11? if you look at here, come look at this. If we were to shoot the 14 first, yeah. the, the ball is somewhat going more that direction, means that now your angle is going to open up and come more towards the right of the box, unless you're willing to put some spin on it to straighten it out. Mm. Okay? So, based on what you're telling me your philosophy is and, 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 and the philosophy that Ralph's given you, you're kind of like at the midway point right now. Yeah. So again, we're back to preference. What do you want to do? I think I would rather hit the 11 in with topspin and come right back. Yeah, because again, it's, it's, it's not as severe of an angle Yeah. to where now you're, you're having to entertain the idea of putting spin on the ball. Yeah. Looking good, Raleigh. Thank you. All right, so now this is a definite two railer. Yeah, and now, uh, being this the, the first time that we have done this together, uh, something that we have to factor in, or just from my experience working with others, is that, hey, we're kind of close to the finish line. And sometimes 
uh, emotions can get involved, whether it's excitement, whether it's fear, uh, because you're wanting to continue this run and then have the pleasure to be able to put four more balls up. So this might, this might be a moment where just take a little bit extra time okay, and get centered, kind of like the center field drill. Is that why they call it that? Well, that's, we can. Cool. So I'm gonna look at this tangent line. Mm -hmm. One, two, and it's it's basically spinning me right back. So I don't need a lot of right hand spin. Right, and and the and the closer you get to being in the middle of the box, the more angles that will open up for you to work with. Okay. So I've been I've been using a lot of these techniques that we talked about. Being closer, stepping right in, and trying to be really nice and centered. All right, I'm gonna have to stop you, Raleigh. Please. Okay, so with the way that you're cueing, yeah. um, what, are, what, are you, what are you expecting the ball to do? I'd like to hit it with stun. Okay, uh, so you, you'd like to versus what are we gonna do? Okay, I'm, I'm, I was gonna blow it and, and, uh, and not make it back into the box, but I would l have liked to hit it and then make it right into the center. Okay, so to the best of your ability right now. Can right. you tell me how the, you want this ball to travel from the 14 to the box? Yeah, so I would like it to hit the 14 in. Yeah, and where's it gonna cross, hit on the rail? Right there. That way, okay, so now that you've pointed it out and we both uh, kind of are, are, are on the same page, do you think where you were currently queuing was gonna get you there? I mean, the way you're saying it, no. Okay, but re regardless of what, what, I'm, what I'm saying or what my opinion is, mm. um, in order for this to stick, I, I need you to become a little bit more accountable with me. Yes okay. or no, Raleigh? It's, it's simple. I mean, uh, I thought it would. Okay. Yeah. So. Yes. Now I can come in to this being the coach? Please. Wasn't happening. Oh, so it's either, did it come down to, was it a conceptualization issue? Or was it, uh, had to do with your perception? Um, where was it gonna go? It was going to go more towards the the diamond, the middle diamond, okay. and then it would have came off uh, long. Okay. So if you're wanting it to go two rails, right? Right. Then um, you're and you're wanting it to go further down on that short rail. Yeah. To then come now shorter into the long rail, to then come longer into the center. Yeah. So what would you have to change from what you are currently doing with your tip placement? So I have to go down. Have Excellent. To tip down. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. And before we come into it, are you putting spin? No. Okay, well, you if, put a hair if, if you're not gonna put any spin, then you're gonna have to know that to follow that tangent, it's gotta be stunning. Yeah. So you cannot be giving up on your stroke here. Okay. Because then it's gonna decelerate, it's gonna change now the action of the ball. The ball's not gonna, it's gonna go from not a slide to then turning over. It's gonna end up rolling. And then it's gonna roll through that tangent. Um, let's go ahead and go lower and let's put some, a little bit of right spin on it, like a half tip of right. Okay. And when we talked about like your tip position, if you're gonna put some spin on the ball, what part of the tip's actually? It's maybe the top of the tip. The, the top of the tip when you go lower, okay. Um, but top left of the tip. Excellent. So that's where you're gonna have a little bit more focus to kind of judge how far you are off from center. Okay, so Raleigh. Great hit. Thank you. Uh, the trajectory was great, but it's speed control, right? And that's why we're doing this. It's not so much about making the ball. Um, it's it's about trying to get the cue ball to somewhere, right? Yeah. I mean, of course, in order for this drill to go and keep going is, is that we have to get our uh, cue ball back to the box. Okay. And so you were online. The only thing there was you just you overamped it. Yeah. Maybe because, you know, I know I, got you, I have you thinking of a lot of things right now that can kind of take you out of the moment or take you out of what you're comfortable doing. 
And this is going to, this is, look, this happens to everybody. This happens to everybody. The, the minute you start to go from just thinking about one thing and now you're starting to like multitask or do a little bit of like dual looping from like, oh, okay, uh, pocket the ball. Oh, okay, bit my tip position here. Oh, want the ball to do this. Oh, it's got to land here. Um, if you don't have much experiencing, uh, experience with that and, and, and having more of a systematical approach and being more procedural, uh, it's gonna be overwhelming and this is liable to happen. So we have to look at it that let's focus on what we did great before we kind of jump into like what could have been better. Right. And you did everything that I asked you to do. It's just, look, whether it was excitement or just lack of experience, it doesn't matter, you just over it. Yeah, I think my one thing that I did was you mentioned you're like you're not putting any spin on it, then you're gonna need to really go through the stroke. And then I had that in mind and then I put spin on it anyway. Okay. So like I kinda added I, I did I forgot to take one of the notes off. Okay. Well so uh, again it's it's uh, some of the way I had you thinking just now, it's it's unfamiliar yeah. to your your current style of thinking. So let's just say, okay, since you were on line, let's go ahead and have the ball, and we'll just say it ended up on that line, it landed into here. Because really, I mean, yeah, you overran position, but you haven't missed yet. So yeah. again, in practice, you know, there, there is a little bit of leeway room for this. It's about your development. It's not so much about like, oh, well, I did this or I did that. No, look, we're, 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 we're trying to get you better so then you can have better results and be able to apply yourself better out there where it really counts. But what counts here right now is your development and you starting to do, have a, a better conceptualization of what I'm asking you to do. And then the more you work with it, you're gonna have better execution um, when, it, when it's gonna count when you're competing at the Open. So look, I'm gonna just stand to the side and I'm gonna let you work through these okay. yourself, but just stay conscious of what we've been going through. Okay. I'm actually gonna hit the 10. I like the 10 a little more. Oh, hey. you got away with it. It's tape, baby. Young man. Who says that sometimes uh, something on the table can't uh, help, can help you out? out? All right, so now it's, I've got a sort of an exotic condition. I'm perfectly straight in on the 11. Okay. So I could just try to hit one of those nice three foot draw shots. Okay. Um, or I could try to come two rails on the 13. Okay, well, I would have to say to continue our run, we're, we're gonna probably wanna stick with one of the two up here because we have more distance here. Okay. So let's just like kind of narrow our variables. Uh, how about, yeah, there you go. See, love how you're thinking. This is similar to the shot we had before starting this run. Yeah. And now you're gonna go about it the same way, just be a little bit more conscientious of your speed control. Yeah. So I'm gonna to wanna to really, I'm gonna really just stun this one. And uh, Or, yeah. without stunning, you could have a little bit more spin and let the spin. Take it all around? Do the work, yeah. Well, okay, all right. Just go with it, Raleigh. I mean, we're, we, you know, we're, we have to treat it like this, and if, if mistakes are made, then we have something to work from. But we gotta be willing to experiment. Okay, stop it, just stop it, just stop it right there. Boom. You're showing me just from here that your conceptualization is going up. Hey. Because your angles, they're starting to get better. It's not that you have an issue with your, your ball pocketing. It's not that you have an issue with conceptualizing what angle you should take to get yourself back to the box. It, it just comes down to speed control. Speed control. And that's gonna, you know, that's something that you are gonna have to venture in on, on your own, okay. Raleigh. All right. I mean, just so, so the more you do it, um, the, the better you're gonna get at it. It's, it comes down to repetition. Okay. Cool. Well, um, I encourage you to try to do this center field drill on your own, and shout out to Mr. Ralph Eckert for teaching us this. Ralph, we love you. Yeah, the number one guy.